Hi, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, tonight we have a very special guest, uh, Mikey from Nuestros Barrios. And he was one of the organizers that um, put together or you know, made a mural happen in Phoenix, Arizona in honor of Vanessa Guilla. And, and we're really excited to really just dive in tonight and get to know him a little bit more and how the project got started. Hello everybody, uh, again, my name's Crystal and I'm really excited to do this interview today. I found uh, Michael on Instagram and uh, reached out to him and he was very excited about this. So I'm happy to be here. Well, I appreciate you guys um, reaching out to, um, to myself um, and to talk about the Vanessa Gann mural and, and the work that we've been doing here in Phoenix. Um, so my name is Michael, um, raised in Phoenix, born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, um, I'm like three, fourth generation here, so my family and my grandparents all from this area. And I'll speak a little bit about like the area that that this mural is located in, um, just a little bit just to give a little bit of background, a little bit of context as it relates to um, the message, right? The message that we wanted to get with that mural and why it came about. So, like a lot of like a, like a lot of people in this country, um, there has there seemed to be like a shift, right? A shift in in and um, either socially or culturally or politically, there seems to be this climate that we're seeing across the nation, right? So with with current social events that happened, George Floyd murder, uh, there, there, was, there was other events that happened, the protests, of course, the politics, and all these things come about in, 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 in our country, in our society. So I, I think for a lot of people, they felt um, a sense of, um, wanting to get some messaging out, wanting to get to highlight certain things that were hitting the media and a lot of platforms. Um, so I, I represent a community that is in I'm downtown Phoenix. We're, we're literally minutes from downtown. We're in the shadows of downtown. Um, this area is known as Nuestro Barrios because it's comprised of four different, five different neighborhoods that represent um, the Phoenix area. These communities have been around since the since the foundation of Phoenix, of Phoenix, Arizona, as a territory, going back to the 1870s and 1890s, when Phoenix was first a territory and then later, later became incorporated, right? So these communities have been around for that long. Um, so they are comprised uh, with where the mural is located in Phoenix, Arizona. It's um, it, the, the community that it's in is called Las Cuatro Milpas. So the Las Cuatro Milpas is is where the Vanessa Guillen mural is at. It's when it's the, the oldest community right now that is in, still in existence from the city of, um, in the city of Phoenix. Um, and the reason why that's important is because because of everything that's happening in the development of Phoenix, Arizona, and the history of our communities is that we're 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 adjacent. We're just west of Sky Harbor Airport. And Sky Harbor Airport is an old airport as well. It's been around since the 30s, I think, the Phoenix um, City purchased um, the airport. Um, and so as cities grew, um, airports grew, populations grew, and this is and, and what happens just like across the country is that the city in progress tends to um, develop around um, poor communities. And so what happened was in the in the early 1950s and 60s, the city of Phoenix Aviation Department bought out, relocated through the use of eminent domain, um, one of the oldest Latino communities in Phoenix, and that was called Golden Gate Barrio. That that community no longer exists. It's it's completely wiped out. Um, the memory of the people are, are gone. Uh, roughly 6,000 homes were relocated to Phoenix, and and that essentially started kind of like. Um, the organizing effort. There's been there's been a lot of efforts of people organizing in our area. We're not the first, and actually we're just this is a continuation, going back prior to civil rights movements in the 60s and 50s and even earlier. Right. So we there's there's historical record of people organizing um, during the 30s, just after the Mexican Revolution. People fled the Mexican Revolution, fled to Arizona, and began working around um, around the area. So. Phoenix was an agricultural area, Arizona was, is either, either ag agriculture or mining. And so those tended to be the jobs that people settled at. So our community, Las Cuatro Milpas, is that. It's the four fields, the four corn fields, and it was an all agricultural area. So people lived near where they worked, and, and it's just been that way for years. So 
So the reason why I say this is because it's laying down the context of why the people in our community have been have been felt that they've been um, either marginalized or disenfranchised from that of the mainstream, right? So that that of city of Phoenix and being ignored, and there's a lot of politics that are going on, and so so developing murals was just one way that we in our community have expressed either political, social, or cultural issues that are important to us, right, across the board. This goes back in the 70s and 80s. This, this is nothing new. There's about there's about 10 or 15 murals in our community that have come about because of artists and, and the community organizing um, around issues and wanting to uh, put these issues out there. So um, the Vanessa Guillen mural came about the same the same way. Um, there was residents, and I'll and I'll share you uh, I'll share with you his, his his Facebook feed and and along with his Instagram um, page. His name is Blas Rocha. Blas is a community member. Um, he's a father. Um, he he he's um, raised in that community just as I was, and and he had this idea. He had this idea of wanting to wanting to um, highlight certain issues and this is this is back in early july maybe even june and uh, where the vanessa guillen movement was picking up um there were some murals coming up um on like across the country and um and this was one of the ways that we wanted to be kind of proactive and on, on, on our effort to share to say that we're here in solidarity with this effort being um sent across the country and and it was during the time when the family was um, organizing the DC the DC march um, around uh, around the accountability issues and the investigation um, congressional investigation so it was all during that time and um, Blas Blas's community manager approached me um, because he knew my back background as far as my organizing in the community we've done this we've done murals um, um, numerous times and there are many murals that we have done in our area and um, he kind of said, "Hey, what do you, let's what do you think about um, this Vanessa Gu a Vanessa Guillen mural in our community?" And I thought, "I go, it's a great idea." Um, and so he's the one that actually found the artist. The artist, his name is AJ Larson, and he is a tattoo artist. So what the, sh the story I like to share about this individual is that AJ is a close friend of our community. He's he's been um, close friends with Blast for a while and, and many other individuals. And uh, so he's been around, uh, but he's always only done tattoo. This was actually his very first mural that he's ever done. And this is actually the very first time that he even used spray paint. He's never used spray paint before. The only art that he's ever done was art on people for their tattoos. Right, and that and that's the reason why Nuestro Barrios is so important because you're not alone in, in that in that in, in, in that thinking is a lot of people don't know, even, even um, are people who have lived here their whole life don't 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 know because this history is not told. So it touches on a lot of different things, right? Not only does it touch on uh, the marginalization, uh, the gentrification uh, of of certain communities, but it also talks about like the, the how we how we get information and, and knowledge and history, right? And who tells history? So these communities are 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 super important. And for many reasons, one is that I mentioned there's five of them: Golden Gate, which no longer exists, Squatsumilpas, which is our community, and it's it is it's disappearing to this day.